Welcome to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. Today I'm playing what I've considered to be my home course here in Connecticut. This is Wyndham Club, North Wyndham, Connecticut. It's an old course with a lot of trees, but it's fun with hickories. I'm using my primary set today, which is five irons, a brassy, a spoon, and a putter. And I'm using a Titleist True Feel low compression ball, which is my ball of choice in warmer weather. I'm also playing from the green tees, which ends up being a pretty good challenge with the hickories. So here's the first hole, pretty straightforward, uh, par four. You've got an interesting situation right off the tee where you've got traffic that actually drives in front of you. Uh, so it's a bit of a distraction sometimes. Uh, but other than that, you've got a lot of wide open fairway in front uh, for a pretty or relatively easy opening tee shot. You'll see my playing partner today is also in Hickory Garb. It's Jacob Orcutt, who is the co-founder of the Connecticut Hickory Golf Association, uh, along with me. Uh, we'll get a good match play on video sometime here in the near future, maybe uh, early next season, so you can see Jacob too. This shot here I've been practicing, and I've had a lot of practice with lately, uh, trying to get out of trouble. I'm using my Tom Stewart 2 iron right there for a low shot. Um, and uh, it's become a pretty reliable trouble club for me. This is my 47 degree Tom Stewart mashy niblick. Nice shot here. Left me with kind of a lengthy par putt, but I've been rolling the ball pretty well and I uh, was using my Tom Stewart RTJ putter. This putter was made very briefly without Bobby Jones's permission. Uh, using a template for some clubs that Tom Stewart had made for Bobby Jones. I've tried several other putters, but I keep coming back to this one because I love the feel. Um, not sure if it has any Bobby Jones magic in it, but definitely a most consistent putter for me. That takes us to the second hole, which is a short par four that's pretty straightforward until you get toward the green where it gets tucked in behind a tree. There's a large tree right off the fairway on the right side that you obviously want to avoid. The right play here is to stay left and um, usually I'm able to do that. Uh, today, not so much. It might have been because of how I was aiming here. I was trying to encourage a draw. But I basically ended up hitting it right where I was aiming. To the right side. I stymied myself there. And stymied I was, right behind the tree I mentioned earlier. But it's a good opportunity to show you the McGregor OA flanged mashie I like to use in situations like this. This is a heavy club, um, but it's perfect for a low runner. I usually like to use this when I've got room on the green uh, for chipping situations. Um, and uh, that's kind of what I was uh, aiming for here. Um, I've got a, a wide open space in front of me if, as long as I don't hit it too far left into the tree. Um, and the club's heavy enough that I can just drop it right down behind the ball and usually get some decent distance. This one came up just a little short of the green. So uh, pulled it out of the bag again, and uh, here I'm choking up on the mashie and using more of a putting stroke, basically a bump and run. Again, letting the weight of the club do most of the work uh, with that little bit of loft, the 36, 37 degrees. It takes us to number three, which is a long par three. Uh, this used to be a par four. Um, the first four holes here on the front nine are original, according to Jacob's research uh, on the cthickorygolf.org website. Um, there's been a lot of ownership changes over the years, and uh, hence um, a lot of rerouting as well. 
And I'm, I'm good for one of these tee shots every round. I tried to stop my backswing that time and it messed me up. What I was referring to is my backswing. I've noticed in these videos that a lot of times I let myself go parallel or pass parallel on my backswing on tee shots. And I was trying to control that a little bit uh, by focusing on more of a three quarters backswing and it was just too many swing thoughts. And then that was just, uh, I don't know, picked myself up out of the swing too soon. But that's a good chance to show you my Tom Stewart Mashy Niblick, 47 degrees in loft. Another heavy club at D8 on the swing weight scale. And um, I'm getting real comfortable with, you know, shots within 100 yards in rough like this, digging it out. Um, this ended up being a pretty nice shot. This green's pretty tricky, um, especially where this pin was placed. Uh, I thought this was going to break more, uh, but it ended up staying pretty straight. And quick, too. show you Jacob's putt here. Jacob's been using a Schenectady putter. Um, he really likes the center shafted design of it and um, he's starting to get more comfortable with it. This was a, an early round that he was using it in. It might seem like the traffic going by is a distraction but honestly uh, you only hear it on this green and then the next hole and for the most part I've been able to zone it out anytime I play here. It takes us to the first real big hole on the course. It's a par five uh, that dog legs left. Um, your tee shot here, if placed properly, will be straight at the bend um, where you've got a clear shot toward the green with your second shot. You wanna stay away from the left side. There's a lot of trees down there. If you get off to the right too much, it's not so bad because you, you can find a way to punch out pretty easy. So just right of the fairway here, but a uh, decent distance that uh, had a straight shot into the rest of the hole. Uh, here, I'm using the Tom Stewart 2 iron, which is usually the iron I use for iron shots above 165 yards. I was happy with the contact there. Had that been in the fairway, I would have used my 21 degree spoon, um, but I was just trying to get it back into the fairway. Uh, ended up hitting it left a little bit, so I'm in the rough, but I got a decent lie here about 150 yards out uh, to use my Gibson Deep Face Mashy uh, 30 degree club. I'm setting up to hit a draw here, but ended up hitting this one straight, uh, right at that bunker. Um, fortunately, didn't go in the bunker, but as you'll see in a moment, wouldn't have mattered anyway. This is definitely the weakest part of my game right now. Still trying to find a way to um, handle these short shots. This is a difficult shot no matter what kind of club you're using, modern or hickories, uh, just from the mental aspect of it. But I, I just did everything wrong here. Didn't follow through the swing. Um, and like I said, I'm still trying to find a consistent shot to rely on for getting out of sand. This definitely isn't it. I'm using my Tom Stewart Mashy Niblick for these shots. Uh, and since this round, I've come up with a better approach. Um, you'll see that in future videos. Uh, but today, not good, and it blew up the score big time on this hole. Once I finally wrap up this nightmare of a hole, 
uh, will be done with the first four holes on the front nine that are original to the course. Uh, the next five are newer. So number five is 165 yard par three. Uh, sets up nice for a draw if you can pull it off. Uh, there is a bunker on the front left that you want to avoid and um, you also want to avoid hitting over the green because it's a bit of an elevated green back there and, and makes for a difficult chip up. Today the story was basically setting up for a draw but hitting, hitting it straight to the right wherever my feet were aiming um, and that happened here again. Uh, right distance but wrong spot. Set up an awkward chip over the cart path. Um, the turf over here is pretty dry, not a lot to work with. My game plan was basically to try to chop it and uh, hope I didn't hit it too hard. But I ended up coming up short. But that's a good opportunity to show you my Gibson Niblick. Uh, I really like this club. It's a flange Niblick, uh, really cool design where uh, with the Maxwell hosel, which um, means they perforated the hosel so they could take weight from the hosel and put it on where the flange is. Um, so kind of a cool idea. It's a very heavy club, E0 on the swing weight scale. And a uh, perfect club for this kind of shot, though I ended up skating this one way past the hole. Um, normally though, I'm, I'm real comfortable with that kind of shot. I just put way too much on that one. It did set up an interesting opportunity for me to try something different. I had my putter with me and didn't want to run back across and get my niblick. Uh, so I tried kind of a little chop chip with the uh, putter. Uh, didn't get a lot of distance out of that particular attempt, but um, since this round I've used it quite a bit and um, I'm, I'm liking how much control I can keep on uh, a, a low skipping runner off the green. It takes us to number six, which is a 325 yard par four, pretty straight, a lot of trees on the left, so you want to stay away from there. Uh, for some reason, didn't get the tee shot recorded, so this is my second shot uh, using my McGregor uh, 36 degree mashie. Nice contact there and I was happy with where it ended up, just off the green on the right side. Ended up chipping and two putting for a bogey, but didn't end up getting that recorded for some reason. Um, so we jump ahead to number seven, which is a par four, 440 yards. It was just a slight bend to the left after about 100 yards off the tee, uh, but for the most part it's a pretty straightforward hole. Um, you just want to stay away from the left side where if you get into those trees you, you end up in jail. This is one of these tee shots where I can see that my feet are lined up a little bit differently than my torso. And uh, I ended up pulling this tee shot left and uh, clipped a tree, so lost some distance off of it too. Uh, but as you'll see, I ended up having a decent <laughs> shot. Before that though, just wanted to show you Jacob's second shot. He definitely found himself in jail. It had a real small opening to try to get this through. Um, and he wasn't gonna be satisfied just punching it out. He wanted to get some distance on it. And he ended up here just short of the green. So it was a great shot all around. So before I show you my second shot, I wanna show you the club I used for it, which is a 21 degree Jack White spoon made by Louisville Golf. This is one of the uh, two newer clubs I have in my bag. Um, and uh, even though I'm in the rough, technically the rough here, it was pretty burnt out and um, didn't have any trouble uh, getting the spoon behind the ball here, so I uh, figured it was a green light. And I was pretty happy with that shot. Ended up coming up just short of the green. On the left side, so, um, Using the flanged 36 degree McGregor mashie here, um, 
to just kind of run it up. The ball kind of took off on me though once it got up on the green and uh, ended up going through the green. So I was a little disappointed with that. So that brings us to number eight, which is the other par five on the front nine, uh, 500 yards, uh, just a slight bend to the left, but for the most part, everything's straight in front of you on this hole. Came over the top on that one and sliced it into the trees, but the trees spit it back out into the rough on the left side of the fairway. So from another patch of thin rough, uh, decided to go with the 21 degree spoon. Obviously, I didn't see the ball very well because it was straight and not into the trees, uh, but perhaps I was just foreshadowing for myself what was going to happen on my next shot, 165 yards out with the Tom Stewart 2 iron, and I ended up doing this. I could say that was just a drastically open club face, but I think we'll all just call it what it is. Uh, it was a shank. Uh, good news was I was able to find it in these leaves. Uh, bad news was I couldn't really advance it any further, so I just had to uh, punch it laterally back into the fairway. Using old reliable mashy niblick here. I was pretty happy with this shot. Left me with a relatively short putt just off the green. just missed that one. But again, overall, so far in this round, i um, putting pretty well. So that takes us to the last hole on the front nine. Uh, par four, 360 yards with the severe dog leg left. Um, your tee shot's usually pretty safe here if you go straight ahead. You want to avoid the left side so you keep the angle you want going into the green. Uh, so I'm, I'm aiming center fairway here. Um, but I wasn't done with the trees. Four. Four. Golf cart came up just after I hit that shot, which uh, that's why we both yelled four. Um, but they were safe. I ended up hitting a tree and getting lucky again, bounced back into the fairway. So a uh, good distance here, about 200 yards out to use the 21 degree spoon. Took a little more turf than I wanted to with that one. So I came up about 50 yards short of the green. 
and you can see the green well you can't really see the green but it's in the shadows there um, this is a pretty significantly sloped green so my play here was to try to pitch this into the front of the green and let it roll up and it mostly did what I was trying to do but it ended up going off toward the back of the green uh, which left me with a pretty steep downhill chip um, so I'm using my putter here just to get it going still ended up leaving this short above the hole and I end up having to settle for a two putt double bogey to close out the front nine Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you check out course vlog number four so you can see the back nine from this round at Wyndham Club. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more Hickory Golf action. Thanks.